Number 24, which of the following functions has or have a minimum value at negative three? Okay, so that's sort of the key. We're looking for a minimum value at negative three. All right, now what functions do we have? We have f of x equals negative six times three to the power of x minus three, then negative three times six to the power of x. And they want us to say, is this one only, two only, one and two, or neither one nor two? So I'll say this is a problem where your knowledge of some of the basic functions and their shapes will help you out a lot, by which I mean things like y equals x squared, parabola, y equals x cubed, looks like that. This is what I'm talking about, like those common functions you see a lot. And so this one, we have an exponential, like exponential ones, select again for more options, select again for more options, select again for more options, lordy. Three, two, one, have a basic sort of, or it goes up to the sky like that. That's our, our normal sort of base form. Like if it was something like y equals two to the power of x, that's what it would look like. And to the left, it would be approaching zero. And then to the right, it would be going into infinity. But let's get a more precise look at this. Let's go over to Desmos and we're going to look at the basic sort of pattern we have with these functions, as well as these two particular ones. And again, remember, keep in mind, we're looking for a minimum value of negative three. So let's hop over to Desmos. Okay, so our first one I have here, I have f of x equals three to the power of x. And as you can see over here to the right, we are going to the sky, we're going up, up, up. And to the left, we're going down, down, down. Now here's something to be aware of with Desmos. Do you see how as I'm going down, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. This will not go on forever. Um, Desmos sort of has a limit as far as how many it's going to go. And see, so look, okay, so it's at four zeros and one, it's gonna start showing zero. Is the value actually zero there? No, it is not. It's getting smaller and smaller. It is approaching zero, but it never hit zero. But Desmos is not going to give you infinite decimals out to the right, so it cannot show that. Be aware of that for the future for similar problems, because it would be so easy for you to go, hey, like this one has a minimum value of zero. It doesn't. All right, let's look at the second version. This is when we add a addition or subtraction to the outside of that core, like three to the power of X, that core exponential. This is going to translate it down three. That's what happens like when we had y equals x squared and then it was y equals x squared minus three. It takes that x squared and moves it down three. So let's turn that on and sure enough, there we go. We can see it's just moved that same function down three. Now what if we put a negative in front of it? Negative three to the power of x. That is going to flip it across the x-axis in this case. It's just going to turn it upside down wherever it's at. But in this case, because it's approaching zero, the original up here is approaching zero. This one down here is also going to be approaching zero and getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But on the negative side, it's just a mirror image of it. So like if I say I had, show you again, like if I did this one, but I put a, turn that off, put a negative in front of it. See, it's going to Oh, negative, negative. <laughs> See, it's a mirror image of that one. It flips it across a horizontal line, a mirror across a horizontal line, that um, line that it's approaching. Okay, so our two that are from, here are the two that are actually from the problem. And what's going on with these two? They are on the left, they're each approaching a value, but never crossing that line. This one, um, the g of x, the negative three times six to the power of x is approaching zero. It, even though Desmos doesn't show this, it's never crossing it or touching it. And then on the right hand side it is going downward into infinity. And our other one, that negative six times three to the power of x minus three, it is approaching negative three and getting closer and closer. And there Desmos has <laughs> led you astray by saying it actually is negative three. It's not, it's very, very small. Uh, distance away from negative three, but it is negative three point zero 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 one, something like that. And then on the right, it's going into infinity. Now, when students see this negative three and zero, I'm going to bet you there's going to be several people out there, quite a few, I dare say, that are going to say, oh, negative three, I see a negative three there. Negative three is one of what they're looking for, minimum value at negative three. That's got to be it. But what does minimum value mean? A minimum is the smallest, the smallest number. 
the lowest that it goes on the y-axis. Now look at these. These go on forever. They keep getting lower and lower and lower and lower and keep going and going. And they're going to do that forever. There is no limit. There is no minimum. There's not even a maximum <laughs> because it approaches negative three and it approaches zero, but it never hits it. It's always getting closer and closer and closer. So these exponentials, they don't have minimums and they don't have maximums. And that's what I was meaning before when I was talking about uh, knowing the, the forms of the basic functions and what they do. Does a parabola have a minimum or a maximum? Yes. Yes, it does. So y equals x squared. Like there, does that have, this one has a minimum. It has that lowest y value. And if I put a negative in front of it, then it would have a maximum, the highest y value. Same with it was an x cubed. We could look at that and say, see what we know about an x cubed. Ah, uh, does that have a minimum or maximum value? Nope. To the left, it goes up into infinity, and to the right, it goes down into infinity. That's the negative version. Here's the positive. And that one, same one. It goes up into infinity, and then it goes down into infinity. It has no negative or maximum. <laughs> negative has no minimum or maximum. So, you know, these are, uh, when we know these basic facts about our standard, um, our standard uh, functions, it can help us. So just right here, as soon as we see it's an exponential, we go, wait a minute, it's asking for a minimum value. Exponentials don't have minimum or maximum values. They're approaching a line, an asymptote on one side, and they're going into infinity on the other. So no minimum or maximum. Okay. You wouldn't even have to put these into Desmos and fiddle around with it. You could just know that. So if we go back to our board, what is our answer going to be? Which of them has a minimum value at negative three? Neither of them do. It is D, neither one nor two.